Hi everyone, so a lot of you have started writing your international trade IA or are in the process of doing so. So I thought that I would share a sample that I've written and share the process that I went through to write this level 7 IA. To be clear, I've had this IA verified with IB teachers to make sure that it would score a 7 so you can rest assured that if you write something following this process, you too can get maximum points on your IA. Okay, so the article that I've chosen is titled French Wine Industry Braces for Tough Year as US Tariffs Bite. So you can read through the paragraph or you can read through with me. But the first paragraph says French wine exports to the United States plunged by almost a fifth in the last quarter of 2019 as punitive tariffs kicked in. The FEVS industry body said Wednesday and warrant of a challenging year abroad. So I've highlighted the line United States exports plunged by almost a fifth in the last quarters of 2019 as punitive tariffs kicked in. Okay, so we get the sense here that this is a form of protectionism by the US to French wine exports. So the first definition that we can clearly use in our RA would be tariffs. Right, so the first thing that we could define in our IA would be tariffs, a form of protectionism, a compulsory levy to give domestic producers an advantage as compared to foreign producers. In this case, the domestic producers is the US, the French producers um, are the foreign producers. I think it's always good in your IA to focus on a specific country that you want to analyze because a lot of your IA will be evaluation, evaluating the result that the policy will have on the relevant economy. So of course you should focus on whether you're going to look at how this impacts the US or how this impacts the French. Personally, I've chosen to focus on France and evaluating how the tariff will affect the French industry, particularly, be, particularly because um, the article warns of a challenging year abroad, which indicates that the tariff is significantly going to impact Fran um, France's net export revenue. And then the next part that I highlighted says, even the global increase it said was partly motivated motivated by fear as jittery buyers place anticipation orders. So anticipation orders to me um, indicates a lack of consumer confidence, um, some uncertainty, and of course this can also affect the French economy because if there's low consumer confidence in the French economy this can decrease consumption. And again, we also get the sense that the French economy is going to be severely impacted by, again, this line, a severe effect on French wines and spirits exports, suggesting 2020, 2020 will be a challenging year. Again, we also have a specific value saying that value of wine exports to the U.S. will 44% from October to November. And the reason that I'm going through and highlighting these parts is because these are parts that I will probably reference either directly or indirectly in my IA. So, for instance, I can quote this specific number to make the examiner sure that I am referring to the article and I'm not just basing it solely on economic theory. We also have the justification for the tariff. And again, we get another sense of how detrimental the tariff will be on the French economy because the US represents one of the biggest countries that is a purchaser of wine and spirit sales. So you can also think about this as like if the US decides to stop importing from France, then the demand for French wine will severely fall and this can even decrease the price of French wine, so the price of the average price index of the value of French exports and therefore that can affect um, France's terms of trade. And then there's also the mentioning here of significant long-term repercussions on exporting companies and more broadly on the 500,000 wine industry stakeholders. So when they mention stakeholders, they mean both firms and the employees that firms have. So here we have a reference of what will probably turn out to be cyclical unemployment, right? Because if we have a fall in the demand for French wine, then firms will demand less labor and therefore they might there might be significant unemployment in that industry. Again, another problem from the French economy. And the French government also mentions that it wants the EU to give some sort of compensation for the fact that the only reason that the US imposed this tariff on the first place is as a form of retaliation for EU subsidies on arrival of the American um, airplane model. So again, we get a sense of how the international trade climate is and maybe even how being part of a monetary union in the, Fran in the case of France results in it facing the blow of retaliation tariffs. Okay, so let's start with how I've written the IA. So I always start my first paragraph, or it's literally a paragraph of two or three sentences explaining the general idea of the article. So I wrote here, the article entitled French Wine Industry Basis for a Tough Year as U.S. Tariff Bites highlights the U.S. imposition of a tariff on French produced wine as a form of retaliation for the EU's previous use of subsidies to give Airbus a competitive upper hand, America's rival in the aviation industry. So we have the main idea of the article. We have the imposition of a tariff 
by the US on France, we have the reasoning, right, as a retaliation for the Airbus um, subsidies, and we have a line indicating what the IA will do. So the following essay will look at how this tariff, defined as a government-imposed levy on foreign imports, will affect France's economy. So I've clearly highlighted what it is that I'm going to evaluate and how I'm going to do that. I suggest that after this first paragraph of your intro, you have another paragraph where you explain the tariff in terms of a diagram, if you're doing a tariff um, article. Look at the key points here. So our diagram one is clearly labeled as diagram world, one, world market for wine following US tariff. We have the quantity of wine, we have the price of wine as it goes up from world price to world price plus tariff. And we say, assume that initially American wine producers supplied wine at Q1, right? So Q1 is the level at which um, domestic American wine producers would produce, while French producers supply the remaining air, um, distance between Q1 and Q4, which is actually Q4 is the actual demand for wine. And following the US tariff, there's an increase in the price to P1, and subsequently demand for wine decreases to Q3, right? Because a higher price leads to the law of demand, a higher price leads to less quantity demanded. And the tariff makes U.S. producers more internationally competitive at a higher quantity and shifts production to them, increasing their surplus by area one, as seen in diagram one. So note that I've labeled the specific areas one, two, three, and four so that I can clearly refer to them when I'm evaluating the effects of the tariff. So of course, the first thing to mention about the tariff is that, that it does result in a global misallocation of resources and trade diversion. So what we mean by trade diversion here is the idea that the tax will shift production from efficient French wine producers to inefficient American wine producers, right? Because a tariff creates an artificial competitive advantage to American producers even though they're not as efficient as French wine producers. And this loss of efficiency results in a deadweight loss or potential welfare gain, however you want to call it, um, which is represented by areas 2 and 4. So 2 and 4, these triangles are, if you want to call it deadweight loss or a loss of efficiency, green loss, um, up to you. But it's worth mentioning that the tariff diagram itself allows us to see this loss of efficiency. I also quickly said something about the regressiveness of the tariff because I think it is worth mentioning that in the US the tariff will be more impactful on low income households than high income households because it represents a higher proportion of their income. But then I start right away with how the French economy will be impacted by this. The most clear impact will be the loss of wine revenue. So initially, wine revenue was at, at P, Q1, Q4, right, um, as shown in diagram one, but this will significantly be reduced. Um, and because net export revenue is a component of aggregate demand, the loss of export revenue will lead to a fall in aggregate demand, which we can show on the ASAD diagram. Again, I've labeled this diagram clearly diagram two, ADAS diagram showing the tariffs effect on France's GDP. We have real GDP on the x-axis, general price level on the y-axis. Remember that when we are drawing the Keynesian model, we are not talking about LRAS, we are talking about AS. There's no such thing really as LRAS in the Keynesian model. And then I start with the evaluation. So the tariff is problematic given that the US, along with the UK and China, quote, so see I'm quoting from the article to make the examiner sure that I'm referencing what I've read in the article, quote, account for 50% of France's overall wine and spirit sales and China is currently experiencing an economic slowdown, meaning that Chinese consumers' disposable income may be too low to afford imports of French wine. So therefore, we have a double blow to the French economy. The tariff is reducing um, export revenue from the US, and also it, there's a fall in Chinese consumption of wine because of the fall in, in national income in China. So both of these together could deteriorate France's terms of trade. So remember when we say France's terms of trade, we mean um, the average price index of exports over the average price index of imports times 100, right? So if suddenly there's less demand for French wine, then it's likely that the price of wine will fall and France's terms of trade will also fall. So France will be able to buy fewer imports per export that it sells. And of course, the repercussions of having a deteriorating, deteriorating terms of trade is that you have more trouble financing your imports and if these imports are necessary for production processes, then this can really hurt um, France and its export sector. We also want to mention that this can even lead to a trade deficit, right? Because our export revenue is falling, and if our import exponential stays the same, then we run the risk of having a trade deficit or a current account deficit in France. 
And it's also worth mentioning, right, that if we have a trade deficit, that might also mean the demand for um, the euro is also falling and that might depreciate the euro. But of course, because France is just one country, that might be a stretch, which is why I've decided not to include it. I think also because you only have 750 words, you need to constantly be making these decisions as to, you know, what parts of the evaluation are most justified by the article, what is most relevant. And of course, we should also mention the unemployment levels. So the US tariff may also increase France unemployment levels in the wine industry. As the article indicates, the tariff will, again, quote, will have significant long-term repercussions on the 500,000 wine industry stakeholders. So again, because the demand for France's wine output will fall, well, then the demand for labor um, within the firms that produce wine will also fall because they will need to produce less um, to meet the lower demand. So I always like to use a market for labor diagram when I'm talking about unemployment because it's one thing to show that AD is shifting to the left, but you have to show that because AD is shifting to the left, real output is falling, so less needs to be produced, so less labor is needed to actually produce this output. So I like to pair it with a market for labor diagram to make it clear for the examiner. So we have wage rate on the y-axis, we have number of workers on the y-axis, and we show how the fall in the demand for labor in the wine industry results in an increase in unemployment from N to N1. And not only can this cause cyclical unemployment, but as I say here, moreover, this can create a mismatch between the economy's demands and the skills possessed by workers, as workers of the wine industry may not have the training necessary to move to other jobs, therefore structural unemployment can occur. On the other hand, one could argue that the tariff might actually incentivize French wine producers to become more efficient and reduce costs to the point where they can be internationally competitive even with the imposed tariff. So actually here, if you can tell, there's a point of evaluation. First I say all the problems that the tariff can have on the French economy and then I say, well actually, it can also push um, the, comp the competitiveness of American producers and therefore incentivize, Fran incentivize French wine producers to meet that competitiveness as well. But of course, in the meantime, strong trade tensions will be detrimental to French consumers' confidence about the economic future. Since expectations are self-fulfilling in economics, this low confidence will increase consumers' propensity to save rather than consume, therefore shifting AD further left. So what I mean by expectations are self-fulfilling in economics is that if people in an economy believe that the economy is going to get worse, they're going to save rather than consume, and actually they themselves will push the economy to become worse because savings are a leakage, whereas you know consumption is an injection. So ultimately, the effects of the tariff will likely, um, by decreasing demand for French exports and therefore the euro, threaten to depreciate the currency. If PED is inelastic for France's imports, they can, this can even cause inflationary pressure, as illustrated in diagram 4. To be clear, the reason that AS would shift to the left, causing cost push inflation, is because it would represent a supply side shock to the economy. And then in my conclusion, as you can see, it's a very short conclusion, I just say overall the article serves as a good example of why protectionism eventually hurts all countries involved and is a form of beggar thy neighbor policies, meaning that hurting trading partners will inevitably hurt your economy too. After all, if the European Union had not first subsidized the Airbus company to get a, com a competitive advantage, the US would not have retaliated through tariffs on France. It is clear that through this protectionism, the US hopes to depreciate France's currency the euro by decreasing demand for French exports and therefore hurt the entire monetary union. So we've summarized what the intentions of the U.S. have been and how it's affected the French economy. And my concluding thought has been that this is a clear example of why liberalized trade is the way to go and why protectionism hurts everybody involved. What I would say is that your conclusion should give an, a definitive stance on what you think and what you think your analysis of this article has given you and what your concluding thoughts are, of course. And of course, the word count is 748. And really, if you're writing your eye and you realize that you have so many thoughts and you're a couple, 300, 400 words over, minimize the word count at the end and you'll find you have a lot of surplus words that don't really add anything to your IA in terms of evaluation or analysis and you can take those out. But really, it is possible to cover a lot of topics in just 750 words if you stick to clearly looking at the rubric and what they're going to give you points for. Not This isn't an English IA. Do not describe what is happening in the article because they know what is happening in the article. They can just read the article. You get points on your economic analysis of what's happening and that's and your evaluation of it. And that's how you get a seven mark IA. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. And hopefully I'll be completing a macroeconomics IA tutorial for you as well soon.